The inaugural spring season of the Canadian Premier League has come to an end, and with it the Calgary Cavalry put up an absolutely dominant first spring season and won the league by a large amount, five points, which is quite a bit considering the fact that this spring season only lasted for 10 games. Calgary started off the season with a seven game winning run, only losing in their eighth game of the season against the Hamilton Forge, and then losing their last game of the season against Pacific FC after they had already won the title. So an absolutely dominant performance by the Calgary Cavalry. They were the best team right out of the gate, the best team for the entire spring season, and they win a very well-deserved spring season and a ticket to the 2019 Canadian Premier League Championship. Now there was a lot of predictions going into the season about where teams would rack up, and I think most people expected that Calgary and Hamilton would be up near the top. There were some surprises. I don't think very many people expected Winnipeg to be so far down. Pacific was expected to have one of the worst teams in the league, and well, they did come very close to the bottom of the table. Fifth in a seventh team league is not terrible. But I think the real most interesting thing about this league is the um is how close all of these teams are. There is a five-point gap between Calgary and Hamilton, the top two teams in the league, and then a five-point gap between Hamilton and the third-place team in the league, FC Edmonton. But between the third-place team, FC Edmonton, and the last-place team, Winnipeg Valor, there is only a five-point gap between those five teams, and three of them all tied with 11 points during the spring season. So one thing that really stands out is just how close all these teams are Yes, Calgary and Hamilton stand out significantly, but after that, all these other teams are very, very similar in terms of their performance on the field. And looking at all these teams, everyone did about what was expected of them. I don't think people expected Calgary to be as dominant as they were, but Hamilton was expected to perform pretty well. Edmonton was expected to be a little bit better, especially considering their previous NASL experience. York 9, Pacific were both expected to be kind of bad. Halifax was expected to be mid-table. Valor's the only real surprise, as I don't think many people had them finishing completely bottom of the table, especially given the fact that Pacific had Marcel de Jong get injured in the preseason, and that was supposed to be a huge blow to them, and York 9 just didn't really have that good of a signing period before the season. And in terms of individual performances, Tristan Borges, who is just an absolutely fantastic Canadian 19-year-old Forge FC, Dominic Malanga, and Umar Diouk, who play for Calvary and FC Edmonton respectively, all tied for the league lead with four goals. And again, that shows just how close this league is, as no one player is running away at the scoring race. Even on individual teams, no one player is far and away leading their team in scoring. All three of those teams also had players with three goals. So even amongst individual teams, the scoring is pretty evenly split. So this, all right off the bat, this spring season is showing just how level this league is and how no one really has come out as the star player, star striker in this league. And, well, Calgary has come out as the star team in this league. They didn't do it off the back of a superstar striker. Their top scorer had the same amount of goals as the top scorers on both of the two teams right below them in the standings. But now I want to move on to what probably is the most important thing for a new growing league, and that is attendance. So on the attendance table... As you can see, performance didn't really correlate to attendance in the spring season. Calgary came in first. At the beginning of the season, they had a lot of attendance problems, partially because it was still having snowstorms in Calgary when the season started. Alberta has some messed up weather, man. Anyway, Calgary, actually their attendance started to go up as June came and the weather started to get nicer in Calgary and the team obviously is performing very well and because of that it probably drove attendance up even more so they went from a last place attendance to finishing fourth in the overall attendance rankings at 3,480. Still not amazing but you have the feeling that with the better weather that's going to happen during the summer season that's only going to go up. Hamilton Forge led the league with attendance at 8,511 people per game. That, of course, was boosted by the first game of the season and the inaugural game of the league, where they gave out a bunch of free tickets and had over 17,000 people show up. But even after that, their minimum attendance was still like 5,800 or something, and that was on a cold, rainy Mother's Day against Calgary. So even with terrible weather, this team still sells more tickets than most teams in this league average, and that's very good. Hamilton is a very big city, and we're completely starved for another professional sports team that wasn't the Ticats. 
and the addition of Hamilton Forge just gives Hamilton another team that they really do need. FC Edmonton averages 3,318 people per game, which is about the same as they did in their last season in the NASL. Again, you would hope that that would get higher, but again, because it's Alberta, you have to figure that the weather played a big part in the reason why that was so low, and it'll probably go up during the summer season. Halifax Wanderers did very well with 5,937 people per game, almost 6,000 people per game. Again, Halifax, like Hamilton, is a team starved for a professional sports team. I know there's an ownership group trying to bring a CFL team to them, but the fact that the Canadian Premier League got there first and is their first really big national professional team is absolutely huge. And their attendance numbers show that the people in Halifax were just starved for a professional sports team. Because, well, yes, the Mooseheads are a very good hockey team, they are a QMJHL team, and that is a step below professional. Pacific FC averaged 3,394 people per game. This one I'm a little concerned about because the attendance is not that great. You could base this off the fact that their stadium is a bit of a drive outside of Victoria, but in BC, next to the Pacific Ocean, the weather doesn't fluctuate that much during the year, so they don't really have the terrible weather argument that Calgary or Edmonton have. But I think you can blame quite a bit of that is the fact that the team was expected to be bad and they did have a quite bad start to the season. So hopefully if they improve that attendance will go up. If it stays level for a first year team that's probably about fine. But you would hope that, that would increase. York 9 averaged less than 3,000 people a game. Averaged just over 2,500 people a game. That is really bad. This team had a long-term goal of building a 15,000 seat stadium in York Region and becoming a contender to TFC for the soccer population in Toronto. And they came out, they had quite a bad start to the season. They didn't play their first home game until late May due to renovations to York Lions Field. And when they finally did play not very many people showed up. This number has to go up, and part of the way it can go up is York 9 has to get better, but also just they have to interact with the soccer community in York Region more. I know the soccer community in Vaughan and most of York Region is quite large, and they just have to connect to that fan group and make those people their fans because they have the population to have a great attendance. But for some reason, they just haven't been able to get those people to attend their games. And Winnipeg Valor, despite being in a place of bad weather, having a terrible spring season, only amassing nine points in 10 games, they still managed to draw over 6,500 people a game. That is an absolutely incredible accomplishment for this team. Yes, they play in a giant stadium, so 6,600 doesn't look like that many people in that stadium, but the fact that they were able to get the second highest attendance in the Canadian Premier League, despite having the worst record, is an absolutely huge showing of how much the people in Winnipeg are going to like this team. And when this team starts winning, because they probably will be able to win, they probably will have the financial backing to win, given the attendance numbers. People will flock to these games, they won't have to move to a bigger stadium, as their stadium already has the capacity to expand with this team, and hopefully this team can get better before the people who come to their games get fatigued of the losing. So that's the rundown of the attendances throughout the spring season. Hopefully. As the weather is better in the summer season, these averages attendances will go up. I think we already are starting to see a bit of an uptick in the last couple of games of the spring season. And the one last thing I wanna do is I want to predict the summer season. So Calgary is the odds on favorites to win the summer season. But interestingly enough, Hamilton Forge had a very slow start to the Canadian Premier League spring season. Their first two, three games were not very good. I think they got four points out of their first three games. After their first loss to Calgary in game four, I believe, they won five games in a row and put in a real solid push to at least not let Calgary clinch the title in game eight. Calgary ended up clinching the title in game nine. So Hamilton, if they could continue on that form that they ended up beating Calgary in week eight, they could make a push for the summer title. The bottom five teams is a complete scramble. These five teams could finish absolutely anywhere in the bottom five in the summer season. But I think that really only one of Calgary or Hamilton have a chance of winning the 2019 Canadian Premier League summer season. 
And because of that, the Canadian Premier League Championship will most likely be Calgary versus Hamilton because if Calgary wins, Hamilton's likely going to have the second best record overall. And if Hamilton wins, Calgary's already booked a ticket. So these two will most likely be the Canadian Premier League Championship, which is not a bad thing as these two teams match up in the Canadian Championship was very, very fun to watch. And these two have probably been the most fun Canadian Premier League matchup to watch so far this year. So that's it for this video. If you liked it, hit like. If you want to see more of my stuff, hit subscribe. And I hope that we have a fantastic 2019 Canadian Premier League summer season.